So making the small uh, mold for our little Vetus flush, flush hatches. Been procrastinating on it and haven't done it yet because we were waiting for color match gel coat. Three months later, finally have two gallons of it. So now we can get that project rolling, get the other flush ones made, and the big, big difference is gonna be the ones on the stern um, that go into our aft cabins. That is really the project I'm wanting, uh, really want to get taken on because then I can start finishing off that back section um, during the winter from the inside, get that all set so that's ready to go. But we do have a bunch more stuff that has come in, things that we've been waiting for. Thanks to the video we put out a couple of weeks ago where we were running the Schedule 40 conduit. Um, and a couple of people mentioned that vacuum, central vacuum tube was considerably lighter, it's like schedule 10 or something like that. We did order 10 tubes of that. So these guys. Much thinner. Much thinner. Much lighter. Incredibly light. So we're gonna be cutting out the things that we put in the schedule 40 and replacing that with these, um, which will help hopefully reduce quite a bit of weight. So we got the gel coat, we can start filling in some of that. Then we have the force bar through holes and the seacock. This is awesome. Um, probably gonna start putting that in in the next day or two. Uh, we've got five of those, so we'll get that set up. Some of the wiring has now come in. We're still uh, months away, I think, before really the wiring's gonna run in, but it's time to start collecting the things. We are gonna need so much of it. So it is just buying it in gross, <laughs> getting all these things, boxes upon boxes, but we want to be prepped so we're not held up by any one little component. So trying to order all those things, get them stored away and ready for us when it is time to finally start doing the electrical system. But this is the things that we'll be working on in the next couple of weeks. Um, very excited to get this stuff done and while we still have some decent weather. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. So excited to finally be talking about something that is different than just fiberglass. Our first plumbing job. This is a Force Bar Type 93, their OEM, the Seacock. It is something that we used on Elements. It's something I used on when I was retrofitting Serendipity, our previous boat even before that. They have been bulletproof, extremely reliable, extremely well built. They're made with uh, Marlon, which is Force Bar's proprietary fiber reinforced nylon. Again, I love this, these things, so why not use that? Negative with it is we would have to use a conventional through hull. And since this boat is foam cored throughout the whole thing, there's no solid middle section for the bottom part of the hulls. Um, to do a flush through hull, we would have to mold that in. The difference between a flush through hull and something with a mushroom, which just goes on top, this is kind of a bad example, but it's one I have, probably isn't that much of a difference. You know, we're not gonna gain a knot of speed by going with something flush, but we are putting in so much effort to make this boat as, as efficient and smooth and quick as possible that the thought of putting just a generic through haul on here kind of bothered me. Perusing Force Bar's website. Oh, oh, that's one of the things with these. Uh, reason why I was on their website is they have like, I don't know, like 50 different configurations for this where you can get it where it is like a manifold setup. There's multiple inputs, multiple outputs. Um, really, really versatile seacocks. Um, so that was the reason why I was on the website. But in doing so, I ran into these, which this is like the biggest boat nerd uh, technology, but it's so cool that I wanted to play with it. These are their Flowtech seacocks. What it does is you actually glass this, so this gets fiberglass to the hull. So you drill a hole in the hull, you fill it with resin. This is actually not threaded. These are um, just grooves all the way around. 
In what this does, you use a thickened resin to bond this into place. So we'll decor in the section, um, back a little bit, just make sure there was no water ingress at all. Um, then fill that with a structural putty, push this in, this will bond to that surface. And because this is fiber reinforced plastic, it actually, stuff like polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy bonds to this extremely well. Once that's all set into place, then we will glass around this flange, but this will become one with the boat. It is something that is used on racing um, vessels. One of the cool things about it is, again, since it's completely flush with it, the big part is, if you notice the actual valve itself, and let me adjust this, open it up. When these things are closed, they are completely flush with the surface of the hull. So the water flowing past it isn't going to have this, uh, it creates almost a vacuum type of thing where the flow of water ends up going in here. It is, again, the biggest nerd thing. We are not going to gain an extra knot of speed because of this, but why not? You know, we're building this boat, we're doing everything that we want to do, and this was just one of those things that I thought was so extremely cool um, technology to make sure that we get that best flow as possible. The way it comes, it's one and seven eighths inch hole that gets drilled in to the hull, which is a full, full flow uh, opening in here into this part. With it, you get these three different um, fittings, which this I think is half inch, three quarters maybe, or one inch, and this is one and a half inch. So you use the same valve for each one of the areas, and you just put on whatever fitting you actually want it for. Red indicates that it is unlocked, and this thing opens and closes. So you can see it is actually and closes there. Green, it's locked in this position, so you can't open and close it. It's gonna still allow us to padlock the shut, something for like our, our um, toilet. So when we're going through the US or any of the places that are regulated, we can lock this in the closed position and we don't have to worry about getting a fine. This is our first one, so we'll see exactly, exactly how it is, but uh, excited again just to play with these things. Um, and we'll eventually tell you how it is. I'd like to thank MyHeritage for sponsoring this episode, and since I've recently found out that my paternal great-grandfather was adopted, I'm going to use Europe's number one DNA service to find out more about my family's ancestry. Inside their DNA kit is a step-by-step -step manual, and it's as easy as swabbing each cheek for 30 seconds, inserting the swab into the vials, which then go into a plastic bag before shipping off. While you're waiting for your results, you can enhance and color correct old photos and Build your family tree with more than 18 billion records at your fingertips. All right, results are in, and it is time to find out that I am 35% <laughs> Estonian. What? And only 14% Irish? <sighs> Sorry, Dad. So much for the belief that I thought I was half Irish and half Polish. So as you can see, even if you thought you knew your heritage, there are always surprises to be found. To find out about your heritage, make sure to buy a DNA kit using this link, which is also in the description box below, and use code SAILING to get free shipping on that. You'll enjoy a free 30-day trial with MyHeritage and all the features it has to offer, and if you decide to continue after that, you'll get a 50% discount, so make sure to go ahead and check that out now. Oh crap. I'm gonna need a new battery. Okay, grab a new battery. Yeah. Any last words? Oh, another hole in the boat. Oh, it's fun. So the only negative I see with this is that once you set it in position and glass it into place, that that is the angle that the hose needs to be able to to enter in or or bend towards. So you got to be very careful of how you place that. Um, it's going to end up going down in here, which leaves it nice and protected. Uh, the shower sump's going to be a little bit further aft. And right underneath here is where the hose comes in, holding tank, going to feed down into that. So this seems like the perfect position for it. 
If you notice, it is kind of, there's still a little bit of angle to the hull. So I'm gonna to try to recreate that when I'm drilling. Um, I don't know how well it's gonna work out, but it'd be better if I can get it so it's on that same angle. So then this flange is sitting as flush as possible against that edge. Let's see what we can do. thing about having a brand new hole saw it actually cut through really well so now I need to decor that area so again that water can't get in there and then clean up this surface so I can glass it and that is gonna get bonded right into there Ooh, very fun yep ultimate boat nerd stuff <laughs> I'm excited So I am mixing in some glass um, pieces because this is going to be a pretty large uh, vinyl ester puck that is going to be in that decord section. And in case we do bump into anything with the bottom, I want to make sure it doesn't split and crack apart. So this is going to add just a little bit of strength to that and hold it hopefully together. This is just in the part that's going into that cord section. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to take imitation lessons with her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty pretty bad one, but yeah, this is like this type of stuff. I absolutely love it. It's just such a cool concept. Nerd alert. Nerd alert, yeah. I don't want to get all. styrene for majority of this stuff, but uh, force bar does call specifically for acetone to clean the surface. So we are doing that. Look at me reading directions and actually following them. All right, All right so that guy's clean. A little wipe it away down her. You're right, preparation age does feel good on the whole. <laughs> Okay, the area's been all sanded and prepped. Again, this part, we're just bonding this actually into place, filling in that core that we, we took out, uh, bonding this actually down, and then once that adheres, once it cures, we'll come in and then glass the area over on the side here to make sure that this, this thing can never pop out. I can take my purple gloves off. <laughs> Let's turn it the right way. 
To glass our new forest bar seacock to the hull, Matt cut three layers of our 12 ounce fiberglass with the top strand matte backing. Each layer would spread out slightly further from the flange, starting around one inch past it and ending at three. Having pre-wet them with resin before application, they would be much easier to apply, and once they were in place, only needed to be rolled out with a metal fin roller to push out any excess air bubbles. layers of 12 ounce double bias with a three quarter ounce mat on it. Um, so that's right around 18 ounces actual of, of glass. Um, they recommended four layers of 17 ounce. So we're right in the specs there. We extended it out everywhere. It is a very thick layer. It's going to end up being um, three sixteenths of an inch thick roughly when it's done and that's sitting directly over that flange for that seacock. So we had no fears of this thing ever coming out. Um, I gotta go through, don't look at it yet. Uh, I gotta go through and roll the heck out of it and get all these air out of here, but uh, we'll let it set up and then we'll be able to sand it, get it propped and paint this bilge area and kind of finish up this, this project. So there it is now, all glass done. And then the other project into the head. So it's gonna be hard to see right now, but PVC pipe leads in to our holding tank. That is all glassed in and exit out there. What that's gonna be is that is the exit for the waste coming out of the actual toilet is gonna come and pump up and fill the holding tank that way. So that way we are direct connected with the PVC pipe to the, uh, the toilet. Um, everything's feeding directly right through there and feeding into here. And then the lid will go on right even with this. So it's right at the lid. But the big thing with it is where, that, where that's exiting is right in line with where the Vetus uh, inspection port will be. So if we do ever need to clean it out, clean out that area, I can open that up and just ream something straight down there and unclog it, fix anything like that. Uh, should work, in theory. Never done it before. So we'll see how that is all gonna play out. But I think this is gonna be the highest flow way with the shortest and the least amount of waste sitting actually in a pipe or anything that could permeate through and create orders, that's gonna reduce that as much as possible. Um, inject it or shoot it out directly right into the tank without getting any rubber hoses in line with that whatsoever, except for the one that comes directly off the toilet. And then that will flow down. Again, the base of the holding tank is angled flowing uh, back into where the drain is. And then the pickup deck fill is gonna go directly above that as well. 
but I got to get the top on first before I can get that in there. And the next step with that, once this glass cures on this PVC pipe, is to go through and clean up this area, barrier coat it, and get a tank coating on the inside so it's, it's a smooth surface in there. And then I can put the actual top on and kind of go from there. Hey there everyone, I am coming to you from the Hall of Fame in our port side, which we are still kind of filling up our first wall here after filling up all four sides of our sail locker over on starboard. And this is just one of the ways that we can say thank you to all of our patrons because of course without their continued support, this catamaran build would not be happening. So these names are gonna be going on the sail locker. They'll be here permanently. So while we're sailing this boat all around the world, we can always be reminded of the people that helped us to get to that point. So I've got a bunch of new names on here today. And I did wanna say, if you're one of our patrons that hasn't seen your name on here yet, just let me know because since we did come over, um, I wanna make sure that I got everybody. I'm not sure if you're on the other walls or on this one, so let me know. But if you do want to get your name on here, go ahead and check out our Patreon page and enjoy other benefits such as early release, ad-free, and sponsor-free videos. And I'm also trying to get much better about getting more consistent private patron-only content up, such as up on our Facebook page and uh, YouTube shorts of like kind of just what we're doing up here day to day. And of course, the real-time updates where I go through every week and just show all of the progress that we've been up to. So make sure to go ahead and check that out and hopefully one day you will see your name up on here as well. They cannot bite through this, so I am invincible. Now on to the part that makes these seacocks so incredibly useful for this application. Um, the part where we make them flush. Okay, Doc Brown. I'm not getting any black widows on me. Well, I can see why they say to sand them off. <laughs> well, we'll just try to. Okay. okay. So that's fun. Huh? I'm gonna give it a second to cool down. Yeah. <laughs> Holy ouch. Yeah, I got kind of hot. I do need to do like a final little touch up of it, but but otherwise Otherwise, you flush. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Okay. So this is how we learn. Uh, cut it first a little bit closer to where we need the final area because regardless of how I held the grinder, it was flinging stuff everywhere. So there's melted plastic all over the place. Luckily it comes right off the gel coat because that is still fairly waxed. So not a problem there at all. I am covered in it. Um, and then I have to do a final sand just to get this kind of melted stuff where it actually did stick to it. But you can see it is perfectly flush when in the closed position now. So that water 
once we have barrier coat on here and we have the bottom paint on of course but uh that water when it's in the closed position just flows right past like there's absolutely nothing there um then we open up the seacock and it's just that little recess thing so it's a great way to make a very flush uh through haul and i'm sure we're gonna gain like a knot or two of speed oh, just I'm by so having really sure. yep. <laughs> go us